Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Fuller here, and in today's video I am going to do a full breakdown of my Halloween theremin. Tis the season, Halloween is right around the corner unless you're watching this video after Halloween and it's around the corner maybe in a few months from now, I don't know. Anyways, this uh, project was inspired by Tim Burton, Nightmare Before Christmas kind of vibe, it's one of my favorite vibes. Uh, a lot of us love Halloween, it's a cool holiday, and um, it's a little creepy. I'm not too big into the really creepy, scary stuff, but I do like uh, this kind of style of animation and some of the little bit lighter, I guess, horror genre, but lighter stuff, fun stuff. Anyways, the Unreal Engine Meta Sounds lends itself very well to what I think is the greatest electronic instrument ever invented, of course, the theremin, which is the signature instrument for science fiction early 1940s and 50s horror music. Danny Elfman uses a lot in his scores, specifically Mars Attacks was one that I really, I remember when I heard that for the first time, I was like, I, I, gotta, I gotta get a theremin. I never got a theremin, but I have a bunch of virtual ones. And, uh, and then also, uh, if you're a, a Marvel fan, the new Loki uh, season that just came out, and the first season of Loki has a lot of theremin in it as well. So it's a super cool instrument, never outdated, always a classic, very distinct style. But the thing about the theremin is it's actually very simple. It's just a sine wave that is manipulated uh, with your hands, by uh, manipulating the pitch and the volume amplitude of the sine wave and so it gives it a really cool smooth feel and because it's electricity it's not exact notes it's not really quantized to a musical scale it's it's the lowest note and the highest note and every note in between which gives it that really legato vibe and then of course vibrato the heavy vibrato to give it the the uh, kind of the classic sci-fi sound anyways you probably didn't come to this video to hear the theory of the history of the theremin but we did create this in unreal engine and it worked really well uh, my previous video has a kind of a playthrough I'm not gonna play through it here because I don't want to waste your time but if you want to see how it works you can go back and check out the playthrough video basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a theremin inside the unreal engine but then I was like how cool would it be if we could use that theremin how cool would it be if we could play that theremin based on where the character was. And so uh, that's what this video is gonna be about. Now this project is a little bit more intense than some of my other projects, so I think it's probably best if I break this down into three videos, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. So in this first video, I'm gonna just show you how to build the theremin, uh, which is actually not the hardest part of this project. Building the theremin was actually pretty easy. And uh, the second part, we're gonna talk about the underscore, cause you know, theremin by itself is cool, but when you get it, when you give it cool, kind of creepy Halloween music, that brings it alive even more. And it also gives yourself like a palette, a background to paint the theremin over, which is really neat. And then in the third video, I will talk about how I built the world, basically how we are interacting with the theremin, because uh, what I landed on was using the player's position to determine which notes are played on the theremin, and then I came up with this idea of being able to jump up a fourth and jump up an octave. So we're gonna look at that in depth. Uh, so here's the first video, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and throw some comments in the chat, and we'll get started. Also, I'm drinking from my Halloween cup. I got this at the dollar store, and it's one of my favorite cups. It's got like a little skeleton hand on it. Anyways. Thought it'd put, it, put us in the mood. So here's just a quick little teaser. Your player starts here, you hear the music playing. When you jump on this first strip, it triggers the theremin. Down here are the low notes. Up here are the high notes. Then you can jump up a musical fourth. And then up an octave. And then when you grab this pumpkin, the music stops. Cool. Okay, so let's look at the theremin itself. So like I said earlier, it's just a sine wave player, but we got a few things set up because I needed to be able to trigger it 
So the thing about any oscillator, a sine wave, square wave, you, uh, triangle wave, uh, whatever, whatever sine wave, whatever generator you're using, it's always on. That's the it's that's the the whole theory of a modular synth. An oscillator is always on. So when you pair that with an amp, uh, or in this case like a VCA, a, vert, a voltage controlled amp, and you control that amp with an ADSR, which is an attack sustained delay release filter, that allows you to open the oscillator on and then close it off. And then by adjusting the attack and the decay times, you can decide what sort of envelope curve that's gonna have. So you can have a smooth rise and then a smooth fall, a quick rise, quick fall, or, and with that you can sculpt the sound into many different things. But since we're going for a classic theremin sound, we have a real short attack and a real short delay. So let's dive into this theremin. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go over here, we're going to create a new Metasound source. We're gonna call this MS Theremin Tutorial. I don't know why, but when I'm filming these videos, I can never type properly. That's just the way it is. Thera Tutorial, okay. So now let's open this. All right, so right now we have an empty Metasound. We don't need this on finish node because we are gonna have this continually play throughout the game. Keep in mind with the meta sound, if it's not running, none of the triggers are gonna work. So once you turn the meta sound on, it stays on throughout the whole game. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a sine wave player. I'm gonna right click and type sine. There it is. And then I'm gonna go out. Now if I hit play, you'll hear that. Basic sine wave. That's the foundation for our theremin, but as you can see right now, sounds nothing like a theremin. And so what we want to do is the first thing we want to do is we want to create an ADSR envelope so that we can sculpt this. So if we just play, the sine wave is going to be on constantly. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add an ADSR and we're going to do an audio ADSR. So what this is going to do, and the way you hook up the ADSR is you have to do a multiplier. So this is going to multiply the audio here and it's gonna come out here. And the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create inputs because it's important that the action of the game interacts with this ADSR. You need something to turn it on and to turn it off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this out and we're going to promote to graph input trigger attack. We're gonna go out here, graph input trigger release. And so what this is allowing us to do is it's allowing us to give us trigger inputs that we can externally and dynamically change, turn on and off while the game is playing and creating the sound. So now if I play this, you hear nothing because this envelope has this oscillator closed. You see the oscillator, but the multiplier is at zero. So when I hit this trigger attack, this will open the envelope. And it's gonna stay open until I hit the trigger release. So I want the attack time to be 0.1 and I want the decay to be 0.2. And here we go. That stays on until we release it. Oh, and I also want the sustain level to be one. So basically, when the ADSR is fully open, I want that volume to be at one, and then the trigger release. So let's hear that. Full volume, and then trigger release. That closes the envelope. So we basically just made an on-off switch for our oscillator. Now what we wanna do is we want to feed this input. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna drag this out and we're gonna create an input. So now this allows us to throw the frequency in there. That sounds like this. So I trigger the ADSR. Now this is maxing out at 440. Let's just change this. It doesn't essentially matter because I'm gonna feed that later, but let's just go, I don't know, 2000. So now we can adjust the frequency, trigger the attack. Okay, cool, so now you have a chromatic frequency modulator. Okay, so now what I wanna do is we have this frequency going in to the sine wave. What we want to do now to add that vibrato is we want that frequency to go up and down just slightly at a steady rate. So instead of uh, this, let me turn this on, instead of this, you get this. Kind of. 
except I want it to be a lot smoother. This is where the LFO comes in. In the modular synth world, it's a low frequency oscillator, so you can't hear it because the frequency range is below the hearing, uh, the, what your ear can hear. But what happens is that moves in a way where it can modulate another signal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook an LFO up to this and that's gonna modulate the pitch just enough to give us that really smooth vibrato. So what we wanna do here is we wanna add, we don't wanna multiply because that would be too drastic. We wanna add a float to this. And what we're gonna add, the mount we're gonna add is gonna be generated by our LFO. So now what I wanna do is I wanna set the minimum value to zero. So the minimum it's gonna oscillate is at zero. And then the maximum, I'm going to come out here, I'm going to create an input, and I'm going to set this to, I chose 110, but let me just put 200 so you can kind of hear the difference. And then this frequency, I set at 5. And so what this is going to do is, this is 5 hertz, so I think that's like 5 times a second it vibrates, which is really slow. Once you get over 20, you can start well, maybe about 40, you can start hearing it, but this is so low you can't hear it. So now when I play this, and turn the track trigger on. Now listen to this as I bring this up. Hear that? How cool is that? So right now this is minimum and maximum value zero. So as I go up, you'll hear this frequency LFO add to this note. There's your super Halloween sci-fi. So on a theremin, you would be able to control this vibrato by one of your hands or maybe a knob. I'm not sure, depending on how it's designed. I think the, the new Moog ones have a knob, an LFO knob. But So this is really cool. So you can kind of play around. You can hear. So you can adjust the pitch. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to set this glide because right now the notes just go, they kind of jump from one to the other if you listen close. It's almost like it's quantizing. What I want to do is I want to set the glide to 0.8 which is really high on a scale of 0 to 1 that's almost full. Happy Halloween, trick or treat. I'm going to go back here. Now listen to it with the glide on. What the glide is doing, again, this is how a real theremin would work, the notes are gliding into another, so it's making it super smooth vibrato. So let's, or super smooth tremolo. Let's uh, listen to that. Here we go. Play around with the vibrato and the pitch. So that's about all there is to the building of the theremin. So we've got frequency in, we've got, uh, this is what we'll call the vibrato. Okay, this will be the note in, because this is gonna, oops, this is gonna come from the blueprint. This has the meta sound on. Here's your sine wave and ADSR, and then here's your mixer out. All together, we got this nice little theremin. We can mess around with the vibrato. So super cool, super creepy. Now if you wanted to take it up a notch, you could come out here and you could throw a little delay on there. And that would be cool. You could throw all sorts of effects on here actually. You could come out here, set the dry level to one, go wet about half, feedback point, I don't know, four. And then you could hear like a little delay
<laughs> that's actually really cool. Um, that's very Mars Attacks, very classic 50s sci-fi. Let's hear that again. And so there you have it. Um, I do recommend using the delay because that sounds super cool. You could throw some other stuff on there too. You could put some verb on there, whatever you want to do. And that's pretty much it. So we got our Metasound turns on. We've got the ADSR. We've got the sine wave going out to delay. We've got the frequency in, which again, in our next video, we're going to show how to feed that from the player location. And then we also have the vibrato adjustment, which you can also adjust from uh, an input as well. Any of these Metasound inputs can be triggered or executed or um, set through the blueprint, which is what makes the meta sounds really powerful so that is it for the theremin part one i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions throw it in the comment i'd love to see how you guys are using this kind of stuff you can also if you want to go crazy you can use more than a sine wave you can use a, a triangle you could use a square wave or if you want to go real crazy you could do some fm frequency modulation which would give you some crazy crazy sound design uh results really freaky cool stuff and yeah i mean you could go all the way with it but this is your basic classic theremin and i hope you enjoyed it happy halloween trick-or-treat and we'll see you in the next video